Okay, in this video we're going to go over line weaver Burke plots. The line weaver Burke plots is essentially another way of representing the data that we saw with Michaelis Menten saturation curves. So as a quick reminder, here we've got the Michaelis Menten equation, right? Reaction velocity is equal to maximum reaction velocity times substrate concentration over Km plus the substrate concentration. Here we have the line weaver Burke equation. This equation is actually just derived from the michaelis menten equation. If you simply take the reciprocal of this equation, you can see pretty quickly that this is just the same equation presented another way. The nice thing about this langweaver burke equation is that you can see it's essentially just a linear line with the simple equation of y equals mx plus b. And this is actually the greatest strength of the line weaver burke plot that when you look at the michaelis menten saturation curve, it's a little hard to interpret what's going on, you know, looking at the different data points. But with a line weaver burke plot, you can easily just take a look at the slope, the x-intercept and y-intercept, and quickly understand what type of inhibitor was added to solution. So to note, the slope is equal to Km over Vmax, the x-intercept is equal to negative 1 over Km, and the y-intercept is equal to 1 over Vmax. We can see this in these plots that I have over here. So these are plots without an inhibitor with the black line, and you're going to notice that our axes, x-axis and y-axis, are 1 over substrate concentration and 1 over reaction velocity. It's for this reason that the line weaver burke plot is often also called the double reciprocal plot. Now, you have to be a little careful when you're reading this plot to understand what's going on. So one over substrate concentration means that if you increase the substrate concentration, you get a smaller value because you're dividing by a larger number. So you're increasing substrate concentration as you go to the left of this graph. Same with reaction velocity. A greater reaction velocity means you're dividing by a larger number. So increasing velocity, reaction velocity is going down the y-axis. And combined, this should make sense because if you increase the substrate concentration, you expect an increase in reaction velocity, which we can see as you go left and down, that's what the shape of the curve is. Now, another point I want to make about this graph is that you can see the x-axis does go into negative values, and there's no such thing as negative substrate concentrations. So in reality, the way this graph is generated is they essentially measure the initial reaction velocity with several different substrate concentrations, and they're going to get several points. Now, since these points lie on a linear line, they're able to extrapolate what the line looks like. So that's why they're able to figure out what this region of the graph looks like where you would have negative substrate concentrations. Now, as I mentioned, the x-intercept here, that's equal to negative 1 over Km. Our y-intercept here, that's equal to 1 over Vmax. So let's just note this in here. We have negative 1 over Km, and we have 1 over Vmax. So now, let's consider what happens if you add a competitive inhibitor. Competitive inhibitors, as we mentioned in the previous video, they compete directly with the substrate to bind to the active site of the enzyme. So they will decrease the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate, which will increase the Km. If you increase the value of the Km, then you're going to be dividing by a larger value. If you divide by a larger value, then you get a smaller magnitude for the number. So that means with a competitive inhibitor, our x-intercept is going to shift closer to zero. So this can be your inhibitor. It's new Km. And we also know that the competitive inhibitor does not affect the maximum reaction velocity, so the Weiner step is unchanged. So you get a graph that looks like this. You have an increase in the slope, a decrease in the x-intercept, or a shift of the x-intercept to the right, and no change in the y-intercept. Let's now take a look at uncompetitive inhibitors. 
Again, right here, the y-intercept is the v-max, the x-intercept is negative 1 over km. As we described, uncompetitive inhibitors are going to increase the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. So that means the KM is going to decrease. So if you're dividing by a smaller number, then you get a larger value. So a more negative value. So that would mean that our KM would shift our x-intercept to the left with the inhibitor. At the same time, we know that the uncompetitive inhibitor also decreases the maximum reaction velocity. So again, if you're dividing by a smaller value, you get a larger y-intercept value. So here, we can say it would be the Vmax with an uncompetitive inhibitor. And what you can appreciate with uncompetitive inhibitors is that you actually end up with a parallel line. So uncompetitive inhibitors give you parallel lines to the original graph where both the x and y intercepts have changed. Now, we can't draw a graph for mixed inhibitors because as we described in the last videos, the KM of mixed inhibitors is variable depending on the specific inhibitor being used. However, we can talk about non-competitive inhibitors because non-competitive inhibitors, we say that they have a decrease in the Vmax, but they do not affect the Km. So we know that our x-intercept shouldn't change, but since Vmax is decreasing, we're going to get a larger value on our y-intercept. So this is going to be what the graph looks like with inhibitor. All right. So these are the line weaver brick plots for competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition, and non-competitive inhibition. And again, the benefit to using the line weaver brick plot is that it makes it very easy for you to just look at the graph and say, oh, my x-intercept changed, but my y-intercept did it. It has to be competitive inhibition. Or I have a series of parallel lines. It's got to be uncompetitive inhibition. And finally, x-intercept didn't change, y-intercept did, it has to be non-competitive inhibition.